Do you need help? Are you hurt? I can help you. It looks like your car's on fire. Can you help me get out? All right, I'm gonna help you. All right, let's get away from the car. There we go. All right, everything's gonna be cool. I can help you. I have a first aid kit here. I'm gonna go ahead and help you. We're just gonna go ahead and take care of this leg, all right? Hey, what's your name? Sarah? Sarah, I'm here to help you, okay? Now this might pinch a little bit, but this is gonna help you, all right? It's gonna help you stop bleeding. All right, you feel that pinch? That's the blood stopping, okay? All right, Sarah, we're gonna take care of your arm here, all right? All right, I'm gonna wrap this up. Okay, hi, you with me, Sarah? All right, Sarah, it looks like you got a little bit of blood on your head. What I wanna do is I'm gonna wrap this around your head, okay? All right, there we go. You're doing fantastic. You are doing fantastic, Sarah. You, call 911. Yes, what happened? Were you too much Red Bull today? Is that, is that what happened? You had a little too much Red Bull? I don't know. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. We're going to fix you up here. There we go. Today, we're going to talk about the Pocket Lifesaver or the Pocket Lifesaver 2.0. And a lot of you guys out there, I know you guys out there, my students of the gun, you're walking around and you think, I've got my gun, check. I've got a good holster, I've got a quality holster, check. Fantastic. I took the time and I researched the ammunition, I'm carrying good ammunition. Fantastic. Some of you have a pocket knife on you. Great, that is awesome and I'm proud of you. You're driving along, you and your kids, you and your spouse, driving along and bam, you get T-boned by some jackhole who is texting on his phone. Now somebody that you really care about is laying next to you and there's bright red blood pumping out of their arm, pumping out of their leg. You're at an intersection. Okay, great. You're in town. The ambulance will probably, by the time somebody calls 911, they get it, receive it, dispatch it, and they get to you, it may be five minutes. Pretty good time. Five minutes is fast. Now if you're in a traffic jam and they have to fight traffic to get to you, might be 10, might be 15 minutes. You say, no big deal, right? We'll wait for the cavalry to arrive. Is that what you do with your gun? Is that why you carry a handgun? Because you just wanna wait for the professionals to arrive? Or do you understand that sometimes you have to take care of business before the professionals arrive? And that is what the Pocket Lifesaver is all about. Now the Pocket Lifesaver, we came up with this concept, Jared and I, we came up with it. Uh, we've been actually working on it in our minds, thinking how could we do it, formulate it, and this is it. It's a vacuum sealed little package. You can put it in a pocket. You can shove it in your sock if you needed to. If you wanted to put this in a purse, ladies, you could do that. You can carry it with you. This is the kit that you will actually carry every day. Because I know a lot of you guys out there are like, dude, Paul, I got it, man. I went out and I bought a kit, and I've got a blowout kit, and it's this big, it's on my pack, it's in my bag, it's in the trunk of my car, it's in my truck. Fantastic. And if you're in your car or your truck, good on you. But what if you're somewhere else? Or what if that pack is in a different vehicle? This is something you actually have on your body. Does it do you any good to buy a self-defense handgun, lock it in a safe at your house, and then go out and about your business? Someone sticks you up, tries to rape you, rob you, murder you. And you're like, hang on, I got a Kimber with Hydroshocks in my safe at home. Let me go get that. Well, it does you no good to have a super G.I. Joe blowout kit that is 200 yards away from the person who's bleeding to death. And that's what this is all about. Let's real quick examine what's in here. Now, what can kill you before the ambulance arrives? A major bleed, right? Major hemorrhage, something that, I'm not talking about boo-boos, nicks, and scratches. I'm talking about bright red blood pumping out of somebody it can kill you in not 10 minutes, not 15 minutes, in two or three. So, A number one, we have the RATS, or RATS tourniquet. Now, this is not, the most expensive tourniquet and it might not necessarily be the number one choice of the Navy SEALs but I tell you what this tourniquet will shut the blood flow off quick fast and in a hurry and you said but Paul I heard if you use a tourniquet that they'll lose their limb bullcrap bullcrap do some research it will not happen now maybe three or four days later it will happen but if you put a tourniquet on stop a major bleed they take them to a hospital 45 minutes later unless something happened to that limb where it got hamburgered up they're gonna be able to save it. They're doing it every single day overseas. They can do it here in the United States. Now what else? We've got gauze. 
Why do you need gauze? You're like, well, I've got a little first aid kit and it's got little two by twos. <laughs> Dude, the two by twos are to wipe the wound off. They're not to soak blood. If somebody is really no kidding bleeding, you need something that's gonna soak up that blood. Now, what else do we have? We have an 18 Delta combat blood soaker. Soak a lot of blood, stick it in a hole, it'll fill up really well. Now, what if someone is unconscious? They're unconscious and you need to make sure that while you're working on them, they have an airway. Because it doesn't do you any good to patch their holes if they choke to death, got no airway. Well, what do we put in unconscious people to maintain an airway? A nose hose. We've got duct tape, and you're like, oh, that's silly, why would I use duct tape? Well, maybe because every U.S. trooper, Marines, Navy SEALs, soldiers, that is deploying to a combat zone has a blowout kit, and in that blowout kit is a mini roll of duct tape. They use it every single day. What if somebody has a hole in their chest? They have a hole in the chest cavity and there's air, outside air, getting into that injured lung. Good thing or bad thing? Bad thing. How do we stop the air from getting in there? Well, we create an airtight seal. What can we create an airtight seal with? Ta-da! The plastic packaging that came with. What else can we use to keep it in place? Ta-da! The duct tape. Bingo. How simple is that, brothers and sisters? Now, there's one other thing. There's a thing called tension pneumothorax and you use a chest decompression needle. And you say, Paul, Hey dude, I'm an EMT, I'm pararescue, there's no chest decomp needle in there. I got gotcha. you. You know why there's no chest decomp needle in there? Because this is a CONUS kit. And you're like, CONUS? Yeah, where you're going to have an ambulance there. Chances are really high, if this happens in an urban or suburban area, that within 15, 20 minutes, the pros will show up with the bright, shiny lights and they'll start working on you. Will you die from a tension pneumothorax in 10 to 15 minutes? Probably not. Also, to be genuinely truthful, if we put a, a decomp needle in there, we would have to raise the price of it $20 a piece. And you're like, dude, I'm not paying an extra $20. Yeah, we know you're not. That's why we didn't put one in there. If you want one, get one, put it in your kit. Now, gear is good. It's always good to have gear. It's way better to have this in your pocket than to start tearing up t-shirts and looking for belts and sticks and all that other stuff. Somebody's bleeding to death, that's not the time to go searching for a stick or a screwdriver to make a, an improvised tourniquet. You always already want to have one already on you. Now, what good is your gun without skill to go with it? What good is medical gear without the training to go with it? Again, not very good. That is why we came up with the Beyond the Band-Aid training class. Beyond the Band-Aid, fighting first aid. How to keep somebody alive. How to stop gap a life-threatening injury, stabilize that person, keep them stable, keep them alive until the pros have time to show up. Because there are certain injuries that can kill you before the ambulance can get there. That's just the way it is. Do you carry an EMT or a paramedic around in your back pocket? Yeah, you probably do right next to that deputy sheriff that you carry in your other back pocket, right? No, sometimes it's up to you to save your own life. Sometimes it's up to you to save the lives of the people that you love. That's why we came up with Beyond the Band-Aid. Now, I'm excited. Jared's on the other side of the camera. He's excited because why? Because we are launching brand new classes at Student of the Gun University. And you're like, dude, I want to know. I'm glad you want to know. And there's lots of dates coming up for the Beyond the Band-Aid class, Use of Force class, uh, ballistic problem solving. You all want to do ballistic problem solving. Pistol 101, just check it out. It's there for your liking. If you don't like it, too bad. Go to Bob, B-O-B dot studentofthegun.com. It'll take you directly to the page. You can check it out from there.